All right, so with almost all of the video editing tutorials I've made so far, it's been about techniques and functions and key bindings in Resolve that I've talked about in isolation on their own. And while I do believe that that type of videos can be very helpful for learning new stuff, I also think that if you want to really actually understand why each of those things is useful, it's good to see them as part of someone's workflow. Which is why in this one I want to do a little breakdown of my video editing process for the content that I make for this YouTube channel. So I'm going to talk about how I edited one of my recent videos where I talked about my FX30 rig and my favorite accessories for it. That way I can go over some of the stuff that I've covered in videos before but this time have it be part of kind of like the bigger picture and hopefully you're able to take a few things away from this video. All right so every video edit starts by making a project for it in Resolve and I do that by using a project template that I've set up for myself which has all of the folders, timelines as well as a few settings applied to those timelines. Uh, I've talked about how you can make your own project templates like this in a video before, which you should definitely go check out if you haven't yet, because it is a pretty useful one. But this essentially makes it so every project that I work on is organized the exact same way. So after I've made the project, the first thing I do is I import my A-roll into it, and that is what I focus on editing down first. There are usually two ways that I approach editing A-roll. The first way I do it is by using the transcription feature in Resolve, where I let it transcribe my A-roll recording, then I put it on the timeline, and then I can select and delete parts of the transcription, which also deletes them from the timeline as well. I'll usually go and read through the transcription and start matching it to whatever script or bullet point list I had for the video. And in the case for this one, it was a full script because I had a lot of things that I had to talk about and I wanted to make sure that I didn't miss anything. So I'll just go and start deleting silences from the transcription as well as sentences where I can tell that there were bad takes. And once I'm done, I should be left with only good takes that I'm happy with, which are the ones that I'm gonna use. Now, sometimes I run into issues with this method that I'm not gonna go super deep into, but the short version is that sometimes the transcription can be out of sync with the audio, meaning that you end up cutting the wrong parts from the clip when you're deleting what should be the right parts from the text. So usually if it does any of those things, I just use my second method of cutting A-roll, which is the good old do it by hand method. I'll just straight up drop the entire A-roll recording into the timeline, and because I've edited videos for so long, I can easily just look at the audio waveform and know where the silences are. So I'll just cut out all of those using my quick cut keybinds, which I have gone over a bunch of times already. And at this stage, I'm not worried about what else is left. I'm just getting rid of the silent parts where I am thinking about how to say something better or where I'm checking my notes. And only after I'm done with that, I go and start watching the clips that are left to kind of start putting together my A-roll edit by deleting the bad takes and leaving the good ones. After that's done, I usually go into my power bins and grab a rule of thirds grid that I've made for myself onto an adjustment layer. And I put that over my footage to make sure that my eyeline is roughly on the top thirds and I select all of the clips and I move them slightly if I need to to make sure that they're positioned correctly. Then I will actually hop into the color page and select all my A-roll clips and add them into a new group which I usually call talking head because that makes color grading them a lot easier which I will get to in a bit. So then I deal with B-roll and for this video I recorded the B-roll after I was done recording the A-roll so I kind of knew where all of the B-roll clips needed to go which is to say that there was a little bit more of a plan to it, which isn't always the case. For some videos, I will already have clips laying around that happen to support whatever I'm talking about well, and I'll use those, but I'll only figure out that they work well after I'm actually done editing my talking head segment. In terms of how I edit my B-roll clips, if there is more footage to work with, I'll go into the cut page and use the Resolve Speed Editor to make selects, and then I'll just like layer them over top of the A-roll. But if I'm not working with that many, I will just layer them on right in the edit page. 
For this video, I had longer B-roll clips where I was showing off the products that I talked about in the video. And because the order I was showing them in the B-roll was the same as the order I was talking about them in, I could just chop up the longer clips into smaller segments and drag them into position over the talking head parts that match them. At this point, I usually deal with stuff like motion graphics, and the ones that I've been using for the longest time are assets from Motion VFX. So I'll talk about what I used from them, but just keep in mind that if you find any of the stuff that I mentioned interesting, you can check the link in the description, as well as use my discount code if you decide to go and pick up something from their website. Now, the first thing I wanted to do is have these little title cards for each piece of gear that I talked about. So the way that I made those was by using the built-in solid color generator in Resolve and changing the color of it to a dark gray so that it's not completely black, but it's also not way too bright so that I don't like flashbang people who are watching my videos in a dark room. Uh, then on top of that, I put this film dust and grain overlay, which I keep in my power bins as well. And if you haven't seen my videos where I talk about power bins, you should definitely go and watch them because power bins are very useful. I don't even remember where I got this overlay from, honestly. I might have just like ripped it off of YouTube, but I'm not sure. I don't remember. But I set the blending mode on that to screen and I also dropped the opacity of it to 50%. And these two things are essentially the background for my title sequences. The titles themselves are from the M Music Video plugin from Motion VFX. And the specific title I used was Typography 05. Uh, it usually has a few other elements outside of the main title. But the cool thing with all of the assets from Motion VFX is that you can customize them a lot. So I got rid of the small subtitles that are usually around the main title with the checkboxes that come with them. And I also dropped the scale of the small elements on top so that they're not visible. Uh, I also disabled the out animation for the title itself, and then I was left with the cool title that shows up with a cool little animation. Now the title card shows up with a hard cut, no transition, but then I wanted it to move over to the b-roll clip after it in a bit more of an interesting way. So here I used another asset from a motion VFX plugin, and this time it was a drag and drop transition from their M Transition Film Roll plugin. The one I used specifically between the title cards and the b-roll is called film specification and there are a ton of settings that you can customize on the transition itself as well but I just decided to leave it as is because I already think it looks cool but also because it appears for such a short amount of time that I didn't feel the need to change anything and right after that I used the title from the m -Hi plugin and this one specifically is the 05 title to basically show the name of whatever product is on screen. Uh, I kind of used it like a lower third, even though technically this title is supposed to be a main title and not a lower third, but you can reposition it and kind of resize it to fit whatever you need. So that's how I used it. So then I used these same things a bunch of times throughout the entire video in kind of the same formula. And at one point, I also used a little arrow from the M Review plugin. And then towards the end of the video, I used another drag and drop transition from the M Transition Film Roll plugin, which is called Scrolls. So in terms of motion graphics assets, that is what I used in this one. And depending on the video, I will sometimes use less, sometimes I'll use more, but I generally just kind of play it by feel. Then it is time to edit my audio and I always start by applying voice isolation around 70% onto the entire audio track with my voice. This is actually a setting that I have applied to the project template that I showed you at the start of the video so I don't have to manually do it every single time. Uh, I also have a plugin called Supertone Clear which I've got a video about and you can go and check that out if you want to, but I use that plugin for some extra cleanup for noise and reverb. And after that, I go into the Fairlight tab and enable the equalizer on a track level again for the same track that has my voice. And I've got an EQ preset saved for the microphone that I use all the time. And you can add your own presets by clicking the plus icon. Uh, even though I have a preset, most of the time I will 
tweak the settings after that just to make sure that everything sounds how I want it to. Same goes for the dynamics. I also enabled those on a track level and have a preset saved, but typically I will mess with the makeup slider to get my levels where I need them because sometimes I might have positioned the microphone a little bit closer, sometimes it might be a little bit further away. So I just want to make sure that all of the levels of my voice are sounding good. And finally, I add a limiter to the bus one and set the ceiling to minus two to make sure that none of my audio in my project ever gets louder than minus two decibels so that it's not too obnoxiously loud. This is just a safety thing, but most platforms nowadays will have their own audio compression that does this when you upload automatically. So at this point, I usually decide if I want to have any background music. And in the case of this video, I did. Uh, for some videos, I'll prefer not to have any, but this one just kind of felt like something was missing without it. So the songs I used this time were from Artlist, and all I did to them was adjust the levels, and then I added a low-pass filter to each of them using the equalizer directly in the inspector so that they don't like overpower my voice. This is when I usually move to the color grading. I start with the A-roll, and I've got a simple power grade saved that I use for pretty much all of my videos. I apply that to my talking head clips at a group post clip level and that way all of the clips that are in my talking head group have the same adjustments applied to them and if I change anything in there it gets updated to all of them and then for the b-roll the color grading workflow depends on what I'm working with if there are clips that were shot in the exact same conditions I will group those together and grade them in the post clip section again but I'm gonna be completely honest I forgot to do that for this video so I just graded one of the clips the way that I liked it and then selected the rest that were shot in the same conditions and I middle mouse clicked on the first one that I graded to copy the grade onto the rest of them. And then I went in and I tweaked the individual settings for each clip where I felt like I needed to. And finally, I moved on to exporting. I've got a preset saved with the settings that I use for every YouTube video and I can't really tell you where I got them from. I've just been using them for the longest time and I like the results that they give me. So if you want, you can pause the video and have a look. All right, so that is more or less what the process of editing a YouTube video has looked like for me for a very long time. Hopefully you were able to take something away from this video, but just keep in mind, I am not saying this is definitively the best way to do things. If you made it this far into the video and you have any advice for what you think I could be doing better, you can go ahead and drop it below in the comments and you might just end up helping me. Anyways, I appreciate you for watching and I think that's about it for this one.